Are you on the winning side today? Yes. Do you really believe that, man? Do you really believe you're on the winning side? Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Wow. To know you're a winner. To know that, man, when this life's over, this ain't the end of it. You're going somewhere where he's at, man. Yes, God. Isn't it wonderful just to have a Savior like that? Let's give him another one. Woo! I'm glad that he's mine today. I'm so glad that I have a relationship with him. You know, I may be a little bit crazy and get off base. We'll get back to the sermon here in a minute. Oh, amen. Amen. Yes. In, in 1967, I got in relationship with God. That's a long time ago. And our relationship is special. It's God ordained. She's the love of my life. And I have found out Willie, that more important than my relationship with her. There's only one thing in my life that's more important than my relationship with her. And that's my relationship with my Amen. Savior. Amen. As much as I love her, I need to love God more. Amen. Yes. As close as I feel to her, I need to feel closer to God. Amen. It's time we got some passion yes. in our relationship with God. It's time we got some fire, some excitement in our relationship God. with God. It's time we quit going through a mundane existence and just going from point A to point B. But hey, let's get the fire going yeah. the inside. Oh it's time we caught the flame. It it's time we stirred it up a little bit. It's time we fell in love with Jesus. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise God. Now, in, in September 11, 2001, there was four groups of terrorists that hijacked four airplanes. Two of them went into the World Trade Center, the Twin Towers. One of them landed in a, a crash in a field in Pennsylvania. And one of them crashed into the west side of the Pentagon. There was great destruction, devastation. I want you to imagine if you're in this World Trade Center and this plane comes flying in. There is an explosion, there's the roar, there's the roar of fire. Man, there's stuff, just death everywhere. And most people in that building run for the exit, Willie. They run as hard as they could to get out. Mm -hmm. But there was some that run to the sound of the roar. The roar of the fire, the roar of the destruction. There was some that run to where that roar was. Those were real heroes. Those were real, real, real men. And when that plane crashed into the Pentagon, that was the roar of the fire, the roar of the explosion. And just like in the World Trade Centers, everybody run and run for the exit door. But there was one man in that building, Lieutenant Colonel Ted Anderson. He grabbed his jacket and he ran to the roar, guys. He ran to where the fire was. Mm -hmm. He ran to where the action was. He put that jacket over a window that was broke out, climbed in it and rescued two women, brought them out, one of them unconscious, one of them badly burned. He ran to where the roar was. He ran to where the action is. He didn't say, let somebody else do it. Let the fire department do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, let somebody come in and be a hero. No, he ran to where the roar was. He ran to where the excitement was, where the need was, Willie. And he rescued people. And for another hour, he kept going back in, going back in, going back in, running to the roar. After a while, the fire department pulled him back and said, no more, and the building collapsed. But because he ran in, our people's lives were saved. Yes. Because he ran to the roar. He went to where the need was. He wasn't afraid. He didn't let fear overcome him. But he ran to the roar. Over in the land of Israel, during the times of King David, there was a young warrior. His name was ben -Aniah. One day ben -Aniah was out walking. 
And Ben and I have heard a sound, Willie, that most men would dread to hear. It was a snowy day. It was a cold day in Israel. And he heard the sound that put terror in almost everybody's heart. He heard the sound of a, a roaring lion. A lion that was seeking to devour, seeking to kill man. Most people would have turned around and said, hey man, I'm going back home. But not Ben and I. Ben, ben and I began to run, David. He ran with all his heart. He ran hard as he could go. He was just driving and driving and he ran to the roar. And he kept looking for the roar. He kept looking for that line. That line had fell in a pit. Ben and I jumped in that pit with that 500 pound line. It's got fangs like that. He's got claws that's able to rip and shred a man to pieces. And he killed that lion. He ran to the roar. He ran to where the problem was. He ran to where God sent him. We need to learn to run to the roar. I think it's 2 uh, Samuel chapter 23, starting with verse 20. Ben and I, that's all right. You're all right, Rick. Who need Ben and I have a backup one. Give me a little problem. That's okay, buddy. I'm not getting you on that. That's tricky anyway. No. Ben and I have the son of Jedediah was a brave man from Kabazil who did some amazing things. He killed two of Moab's best fighters. And on a story day, he went down into a pit and killed a lion. Another time, he killed an Egyptian as big as a giant. The Egyptian was armed with a spear, but Ben and I only had a club. Ben and I grabbed the spear from the Egyptian and killed him with it. Ben and I did all these things. He never became one of the three warriors, but he was just as famous as they were, certainly just as famous as the rest of the 30 warriors. David made him the leader of his bodyguard. Okay. Benaniah was a type of guy that was full of passion. Benaniah was a type of guy that would run to where the action was. He would run to the roar like he did when that lion was there. Now Joshua was also an Israelite warrior. And one day as he was walking through the land, he heard the roar. He heard the roar of 800 Philistine soldiers coming. Heavily armed men. Now Joshua, now he could have run and said, hey, hey, the enemy's coming. Hey, hey, get up. The enemy's coming. Come and help me. But Joshua didn't do that, did he, Willie? No, he ran to the roar. All he had was one spear, David. And he took that one spear and killed 800 Philistine warriors one at a time. He ran to the roar. He went to where the problem was. We need to do that too sometimes. Yes. Shema lived in a time where the enemy was coming and every time that the Israelites would plant crops, they would come and steal the crops or destroy the crops at harvest time. And the Israelites would go hide in the caves and in the rocks. So here, Shema is, he's got him a little pea patch out there. Except the Bible says lentils. And he sees the warriors coming. Everybody's done running, hiding in the rocks. But not Shema. No, he ran to the sound of the roar. He ran, got down in his pea patch, pulled out his sword and said, Come and take it if you can. Sit there, and, and all that long he fought. All that long he slew the enemy. Okay. All that long he stood on the Word of God. Amen. All that long he ran to where the roar was. Yes. He ran to where the problem was. He didn't say, I'm overcome with my fear. Let somebody else take care of this pea patch. No, I will stand on the Word of God. Amen. I will stand in this pea patch Amen. and fight. Yes. Amen. Amen. 
We need to learn to run to the roar. There was a little shepherd boy over in the nation of Israel. The youngest of his father's sons. He was tending the sheep. And all of a sudden there was a bear come by. And the bear began to roar with him. He was going to take one of them sheep. The bear began to roar. And David could say, I'm getting back in the sheep coop. I'm not getting that. But he didn't, did he? He got his rock, rock, he got his sling, and he ran to where that bear was. He ran to where the roar was. He killed the bear. A few days later, there was the roaring of a lion trying to get the sheep. David ran to the sound of the roar. He ran to where that lion was. Same sling, a different rock, and killed the lion. David was a man after God's own heart. He ran to the road. Oh, he ran to where the problem was. And then it trained him for a few days later when he was taking bread and food up to his brothers who was fighting the police. It trained him. It got him prepared. When that giant come out, and defied the nation of Israel and every warrior that said, you got a man big enough to fight, you send him out here. Mm -hmm. They all were shaking in their boots. They were mm -hmm. afraid. They were scared to death. David didn't say, hey man, I'm going back home. He said, that, un that uncircumcised Philistine dog down there mm -hmm. is defying the people of God. He's insulting God. Ain't you going to fight him? Nobody would go. Mm -hmm. But David went and he went to the sound of the roar. Amen. He went to where the fight was. He, he, he got his rock, he got his sling, and he killed that giant. We've got to learn to run to the sound of the roar. We've got to run to go where the battle is, where the action is. We've got to go with passion. We've got to serve God with passion. Amen. The Bible says that Elijah was a great prophet. He was a prophet of the Lord. And Israel was in such idolatry and sin at that time that they were worshiping Baal. They were worshiping any god they could. Elijah said, we need to decide who's God's God. Is Baal God or is God God? Let's get up on Mount Carmel and we'll have us a contest up there. Which God is God? It'll be the God that answers by fire. Oh, there was the sound of the roar there. Oh, 400 of them prophets of Baal crying out, cutting themselves with night, trying to please a false god. There was the sound of the roar. Yes. But Elijah called on God. Fire come down and consumed his sacrifice. He got his sword out, went to the sound of the roar, and slew every one of them prophets of Baal. We need to learn to run to the roar, guys. We need to get beyond what we're doing, what we think, being afraid of everything. We need to run to the roar. One stormy night out on the Sea of Galilee, there was a little boat, and it was being shook. It was being rocked. The waves were high. It was a terrible storm. Terrible storm. They were scared to death, the disciples in that boat. And Jesus come walking on the water. Yes. He come walking on the water. And Peter said, Lord, if that be you, let me get out of this boat and come to you. He heard the sound of the rolling waves. He heard the roar of them. He got out of that boat and he began to walk on that water. He's looking at Jesus and he's doing good. Yes. <laughs> Took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. Jesus reached down and picked him up and saved him. And we want to condemn Peter for not having faith. Hey man, he got out of the boat. Yes, he, did. Amen. he didn't stay in the boat. He got out of the boat. He went to where the sound of the roar was. Amen? Amen. But I want to talk to you just a few minutes about my hero. I want to talk to you about the hero of all heroes. We live in a time where we're fascinated with superheroes. A lot of us like Batman, a lot of us like Superman. 
maybe Thor, maybe Spider-Man, whoever. The Hulk. I know one superhero, guys, that's better Amen. than all of them. Amen. His name's Jesus. Yeah. He's my Savior. He's my Redeemer. His name is Jesus. Yes. They had him in Pilate's Hall. They had him on trial for his life. There was a crowd there. That was a roaring crowd, guys. They were screaming, crucify him. Yes. Crucify him. Kill him. Did Jesus back away from that? No. 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 The Bible says that he called legions of angels to set him free. But that wasn't what he done. No. He went up to the sound of the roar and embraced the whipping post. As that whip began to crack, as it began to caress his flesh and, you, and just yank pieces of meat out, he done that for our healing. Yes. He run to the sound of the roar, guys. He run to the sound of the roar. By Jesus. How Jesus did. My Jesus did. You know, sometimes we become afraid and we let fear just immobilize us. We can't do anything. We're, we're stuck. Have you ever seen anybody that was afraid? I'm sure David has, that they couldn't move. I've seen people like that. Have you ever seen anybody that was so full of fear, David, that uh, they had an odor about them? I've been in them situations. I've been in some situations where fear had totally captivated people. But we don't need to be captivated by fear. We need to run to where that fear is. Yes. You see, I've had to face a lot of fears in my life. And I found out, well, if I face them in the Lord, everything is okay. I remember a time in my life I was totally terrified of snakes. I don't mean terrified. My daddy didn't allow me to be afraid of anything. Fact is, if he thought I had any fear in me, he'd beat me half to death, and I'm telling you the truth. He would take me out in the woods, Willie, and jump snakes at me. I learned to get over, over that fear. We don't need to be paralyzed by fear. Don't let fear dedicate, you know, just dictate your, your decisions that you might make. We might think, man, there's a new job opening here. But I, I, I'm afraid I can't do it. You know, there's a, there's a Sunday school job open. But I'm, I'm afraid I, I can't step out and teach. There's a new opportunity for me to do something. But I'm so afraid. Hey, man, run to that fear. Don't give in to it. Why would you give in to it? Run to it. Run to the roar. And this, I think, this one right here, I think applies to almost everybody. We're living... Our life, that the only purpose is, is to get out easy. Make it easy. Yes. I want to make my life easy. I want to get on easy street. Hey, get beyond that junk. Run to what God's calling you to do. Run to the roar. Forget about easy street. Live dangerously. I believe that with all my heart. Live with a passion. Right on a little bit there, Rick, if you would. Yes. Go after a dream that's just destined to fail without just God intervening. Believe in the impossible. Stop pointing out the problems. Become part of the solution. We need to learn to run to the roar. Grab opportunity by the mane, like the mane of a lion. Grab a hold of it. Hold on with it with all you've got. And say, so, you're not overcoming me. I'm overcoming you. Look at sickness that way too, David. Hey, you're not getting me down. You're not putting me in the grave. I'm a child of God. I'm not 
giving in to that oxygen tank. No. I'm not going back to that oxygen no. tank. Amen. I'm not, I, I served notice this morning. I'm not going back to the stroke symptoms. They're Amen. gone in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm standing on the Word of God. I am not <coughs> going to give in to it. We Amen. need to learn to run to the roar. Now this morning, this moment, there's a roar coming through this church. Listen to it. Listen closely. There's a roar here this morning. It's the roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah. It's the roar of Almighty God this morning. He's roaring in this building today. He's roaring to you. He said, come unto me. All you that are burdened down. All you that are troubled. All you that are lonely. All you that are hurting. Come unto me. He said, come unto me. And usually when I get up here and I give a, 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 an to call, people think I'm calling you up here to get saved. Uh, hey, if you're lost, you need to come and get Amen. saved. But that's not what this is about. I'm calling you this morning to do something different today. I want today to be different than any day you've had in your life. I want it to be different than any day that you've ever experienced. God is calling you this morning to do one thing. He's calling you to come worship Him. Amen. Now, I'm talking alien stuff to some of you. I know that. Some of you, I, I don't think, understand what I'm talking about. There's different ways to worship. Some people will go like me and Willie will. We'll, we'll lift our hands right like that. And we'll just sit there and look up at the sky, look up to the very throne room of God, and we'll think, Oh, God, you're so amazing. God, you're so good to me. God, you're just so great. I just want to worship you. And we've got others that will bow their head and quietly say, Oh God, you're the rose of Sharon. You're the lily of the valley. You're the bright moon star. And that's good. You've got others that will fall on your face, put your nose in the floor and say, God, I'm nothing but dirt. I'm nothing. I can't be anything, God. I'm nothing but dirt and filth. But you are God. Yes. And because you love me, you make me worthy. I worship you. Can we learn to worship God? Can we worship Him this morning? I know this is alien. I know you don't understand. But please, would you just try? If you just come up here this morning, if you just lift your hands up, bow your head, if you can't say anything but hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God, you're worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can worship Him that way. I'm asking you to come this morning. Get up out of your seat. And come right up here as they're singing this song. And worship God as God leads you. Would you please come? Come. Now is the time. Come on. Just worship Him. Come on. Come. Would you come? Would you come and give your heart to Him? Would you come?
to continue on, Lord. And we're, instead of running away anymore, God, let us each stand and fight. But we do it in You. Yes. For it's all about You. It's all about You, God. What You've done for us. There's none of us worthy, God, that we should even stand before Your presence and we wouldn't be able to if it wasn't for You dying on the cross. Thank you, for Lord, for washing us and cleansing us. God, we just praise you for another day that you give us, God. Father, help us each and every one this day, God, to walk nearer and closer to you. I pray for other Lord, that's got needs. Lord, supply that every need for your riches and glory. Thank you for this day, God. Thank you for this message. Thank you for this young, small church, God. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done, for what you're going to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray this.